everybody to Cat Jackson Presents Pigskin Holiday, brought to you by Take Three Powder Donuts. Ed the Man Parrot, <laughs> Carl, No Except Terry, Mario, Lighthouse Mina. <laughs> Speak, you know, speaking of, now, for the last couple, you know, last few weeks, we've, doing, we've been doing a segment called Mario shit, Mario's Ooh. Holy Shit Moments of the Week. Any Gersey? Any Gersey? Any Gersey? I'm Any from Gersey, eh? Gersey, 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 Who came to the rush? And now the floor goes back to Mario Lights Out Spina. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure you get right here. All right, this is the money maker. I don't have my makeup lady with me, but I got CT over here framing me out. So anyways, so you know for the last few weeks, We've had the Mario Holy Shit moments of the week, and it's been going. It's been going good. It's one of my favorite segments, just because I came up with it and I I'm love, a selfish I love bastard. Doing that it is very fun. It's fun for us to just kind of get together and BS inside. a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Put your chicken on the outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and also last week we came up with a new segment called "What Pisses Us Off." So we decided to maybe kind of conjoin them at the hip. Make them intertwinable, interchangeable, just kind of do this little thing where it's, holy shit, this pisses me off. So now, with no further debut, what? holy shit, boys, <laughs> what pisses you off? <coughs> Carl? Are we going to start with me? You want to do your holy shit and then what pisses you off? Tell Absolute. me. Absolutely. My holy shit. Holy shit. To start with. <laughs> All right, enough of that shit. All right, <laughs> San Francisco and Detroit. My holy shit moment for sure. I mean, <coughs> Detroit's been looking unbeatable so far this year. Uh, whenever they've been down, they just plow right on back up. He said plow. Yeah. And they just can pull through no matter what. But then here comes San Francisco. Who's kind of been doing the same thing here. They right? have been. You know? I think that it was Dallas pissed them off real bad. And now they've got something to prove. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a great game. It was real close. And then all of a sudden, San Fran just yeah. out of nowhere. And not, you know, and it wasn't really like that spectacular of a game for Alex Smith. I mean, he, he found his receivers. He did his job. But he didn't really have that outstanding. No, Smith was know. 17 for 32 with 125 yards, a touch. And an interception. Yeah, it's not so good. Not so good. Not so good. But in comparison, Stafford, he was 28 for 50, 293 yards, two touches, no interceptions. Yeah. But then you have the running games and the key injury. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. what, this is, I think, is the difference maker here. Best got hurt. Concussion. Second quarter what, of the year. Do, you know, do we know what quarter that was? I don't, yeah. I don't remember, to be honest with you. Okay. But he only had 12 carries and 37 yards, no touches. That is so low for him because he's been doing so good. Considering he was lights out last week pretty much against Chicago. Oh, yeah. You know, so. My concern on that is with the new NFL rule, the new NFL concussion rule, the, mm -hmm. the Roethlisberger rule. Yeah. Um, they may the make him sit out Cheeseburger well. rule. They could. Yeah. But he, now on the flip side of the running game, Mr. Frank Gore. Mm. Now get this. Church. This church. Turn that team to church. Right. Man. All right. Fifteen carries. Yeah. Talk to me. Until you hear this. 141 yards. Over nine yards a carry. Wow. And a touch. Average. Wow. Gore Man, has got... turned it up again this year. He's kind got of a hot like year for him last year. <laughs> this year he's bringing it back. It's awesome. I love it. I've, I've always liked Frank Gore. As Gore! I've really watched football. Plus, his name is fucking Gore. Right. I mean, good lord. That Gore! Just, that just oozes hey, we, bad mother. We should, we should go with the Rams game tonight. Gore, 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 Gore. Yeah. Yeah. When he gets the ball, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Absolutely. But that was their big difference maker there. She just put him up the field all the time. It was crazy. Good stuff there. On the receiving side, not a whole lot going on. Uh, nine carries, 77 yards for Crabtree. Mm hmm. And then, you know, seven receptions and 113 yards for Johnson. Not too bad. No touches this time, though. Wow. Which is kind of weird for yeah. him. Because he's been so on top of it as far as the touchdowns, ahead of everybody else on the mm -hmm. touchdowns. But Ahead of everybody else in history. Yeah. yeah. And then the tight end situation. And Davis was very much not a factor. Two receptions for eight yards. 
Come on, man. The, the tight end is still a lost art in this league, and I don't get that. But yeah, but I mean, compared to like the week before, whenever Davis was a monster, and then this. Yeah, and I was just gonna, I was just gonna comment on that, you know, with what you just said. Like, it is a lost art, and he does seem to like Vernon Davis. Usually, when he's on, is the the embodiment of what you want a yeah. good, strong tight end to be Very like true. in this league. You know. Yep. Is, so. he, is he the one that got like pretty much told off by Singletary last year? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. he took heat to it. I mean, you know, it could also be Mario and CT, a game plan thing. Yeah. Whoever you face, you use different weapons, and maybe they thought the tight end wouldn't be as effective, and they won the game, so, yeah. yeah. Well, and then uh, Pettigrew, he had eight carries, or uh, receptions, rather, 42 yards and a touch. Not a whole lot going on, but he got that touchdown, so that pops up the points for him, especially right. in my fantasy. <laughs> right, right. Well, on top of that, though, uh, something I kind of wanted to touch on was best. This was his second concussion this year. Wow. Yeah, so they'll probably definitely sit him for a decent amount I'm, of time. I'm thinking that he's going to be out this Get all them week. screws tightened up there. Yep. You know? Now, what? since we're on the uh, you know double double feature type deal here. Well, I want to know what pisses you off. What pisses, what pisses me pisses off. What pisses you the hell off. What really pisses me off is the St. Louis Rams receiving core. Church. If you can call them a receiving core with a straight face, mm -hmm. you've accomplished more than I'm able to do. I can do it. Receiving core. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. This is a ram core from, from This Star Wars. is so bad. I mean, you know, this <laughs> doesn't sound again. like a yeah. lot, but in comparison to the rest of the league, this is enormous. A 13% drop pass rating. Good and a, a punter is an MVP. And, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, what in the holy hell is going on here? This is ridiculous. Catch the damn ball. You're a freaking NFL receiver. This is inexcusable no matter what team you're on or what caliber quarterback you have. Bradford is an amazing quarterback. He proved that last year. He was great, as you would say. Right. Lights out. Man. Precisely. Lights out. And... Nothing this year because nobody could hold on to the damn ball. You know, and this goes back to the statistic that I was, you know, that we were talking about earlier that I was trying to remember prior to the show. Yeah. When you have a thirty-seven and a half percent of your of your offensive play three being three and outs, what yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, like it goes back to the lack of running game. When there's the running game that's on your receiving core, they're dropped. The drop passes, you know, it's you just. Know, I'll take this moment to defend Josh McDaniels on this because the game plan is there. Like I said, in the Green Bay game yesterday, they, they could have outscored Green Bay. They had the game plan in place and they had the plays drawn up. They just couldn't execute the X's and O's. I mean, it's not, it's not the game plan. It's the actual carrying out of the game plan. Right. Uh, I, I just kind of want to uh, transition for mine into yours, Mario, because it kind of goes hand in hand. Okay. Okay. So just just for the sake of it making more sense. Right. Let's hit that up. Maybe this will make me a little happier. That's fine. That's fine. My holy shit moment of the week is something that it happened today for sure that we found out Friday or what is today? What's the name date? Today's Monday. The Monday. 17th of October. The 17th of October. Monday. <laughs> Officially, Brandon Lloyd is a member of the St. Louis Rams. The yeah. This has been something that. You know, we've been talking about how, you know, your this is this goes in effect with your lack of receiving core for the Rams. Brandon Lloyd, I mean, he's such a team player and his attitude is so positive and oh, he's, he's got such a, you know, he, he's just got such a great I, you know, I I'm reiterating myself, but he's got such a great attitude that I'm just kind of blown yeah. away by it because you don't really see a lot of well, NFL players this day and age, kinda especially like, kind of like that Fitzgerald. Has, Fitzgerald. Right, exactly. Well mannered, well spoken, very respectful. Yeah. Well, to be and coming into a team like Mario Alexander is the same way, I think. To be coming into a team like the Rams well are this year, especially knowing the kind of player that you are in perspective, to have that kind of an attitude that speaks volumes for your character. Right. Yeah, and to come to a zero and five team and be that excited about it. Exactly. Right. That's what I mean. You know, I mean, just to you know. Just to kind of give you a little bit of his you know, a, a little bit of an idea of his attitude, uh, and I quote Brandon Lloyd as saying, "I don't see coming to St. Louis as a terrible situation. I see it as a positive situation." He said, "He doesn't see leaving. He's not a disgruntled player that's leaving Denver. He, 
he reiterated that many times in his, you know, yep. in, whenever he was talking on on uh, Sports Center. Yep. About how that, you know, he's excited to see what the, you know, what the Broncos can do with Eddie Royal taking the lead spot, possibly moving. You know, who and knows? Eddie Royal, he's, he's been injured his, and he's on the block. Yeah, his, his season is a little shaky so far, but with you know Demarius Thomas, you know, and uh, I forget, you know, the other couple names that he mentioned. But uh, I mean, just to you know, just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how just outstanding he really is, you know, because you don't really hear about these players that are so good on the, these mediocre teams, you know, except for Calvin Johnson, who's just freaking Megatron, you know. But uh, during his breakout, during his breakout 2011 season, Lloyd had 18 catches for 25 yards or more, and posted the third highest receiving average, 18.8 yards, since the AFL NFL merger in 1970. Oh, Davis. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So he had 18 catches the entire season, but you know, for 25 yards or more for each carry. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I mean, and, you know, last season Brandon Lloyd led the league, you know, with four, uh, 1,488 yards receiving, catching 77 passes, and 11 of those were for touchdowns. So this is a definite uh, addition to um, an up-and-coming, I guess I should say, Rams team that's young. They're trying to find their way. They're trying to figure out who they are. Are we going to be a run-heavy team? Are we going to be a pass-heavy team? Are we going to be a smash-mouth style of defense? Are we going to be, you know, a blitz-happy defense? Are we going to be a man coverage, zone coverage? You know, what are we going to use more? And I just definitely think that this is a step in the right direction as far as getting this team their first win, you know, in the 2012 season. Well, earlier, Jen asked me, she goes, well, do you think with them signing Lloyd that that's going to turn the team around? And my response was, It'll be a pickup, but it's not the answer. Oh, it's not. The whole team has to get the right attitude, and but they do have what they've been looking for and searching for, and that's well, a number one. The receiver. Rams have have made so many. I'm not going to say mistakes, but the poor rest, draft choices. I'm just saying the receiving situation. They've signed like, Clayton, and then uh, they released uh, Sims Walker today. Yeah, they did. And uh, we got guys that don't play anymore. And we got guys that we think would play, and they don't. And they released Avery. Mm -hmm. The receiving situation is really screwed up there in, in St. Louis, or here in St. Louis, I should say. Yeah. And this is a good sign, and a good step in the right direction. Um, and it will definitely pick up the offense. And maybe it'll josh these guys up a little bit, and they'll get that, you know. You know how you drew Brees before the game and do that big old rah, 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 rah thing with the, with the, oh, yeah. the whole team huddled around? Yeah. It's like maybe this will happen now. With these receivers, right? Because the offense is there to, to make the plays. <laughs> <laughs> they just gotta believe. Yeah, they have to believe they can do it, and, and the Rams can do it. And maybe this will help that. And now this kind of goes along with this a little bit, I guess, goes along with my what pisses me off. And what pisses me off is these freaking 0 and 4 teams are these oh these winless teams basically. It's. You're playing okay. You, you're the Miami Dolphins. You're hanging with the Patriots. You can hang with the Patriots, but you can't manage to go, you know, and beat the Chiefs. You can't, you know. Yeah, what's you're, up with that? You're playing. You, you're playing. You know, I, 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 like St. Louis Rams. We do, we were talking earlier. I mean, 24 of those points the Green Bay scored was in the first half. They held them winless or scoreless basically in the second half. The defense did a and they couldn't. Job. They can't. They can't manage to get up some points and at least be competitive in this yeah. game. This this is your job. This is what you do, whether it's the offensive coordinator's fault, whether it's the owner's fault, whether it's poor draft choices. I honestly don't give a shit. You are you are put in place in this league to do a certain job. Dropped passes, no accept. Negative run, negative yards rushing, I'm sorry, that's okay maybe once, twice a game, but after that, get your ass out there and run the damn football. Otherwise, get the fuck back to the factory where you were working and just be a minimum wager like us. Precise! Otherwise, you know, I just don't understand... How these teams just can't seem to get this done, and how these teams these are some some of these are teams that you know we they had so so much high expectations for. These are things that you have to work out. This is what you have an offensive coordinator for. This is what you have a defensive coordinator for. This is what you have a special teams coach for. And this is why you have a bastard that's called the head coach that oversees all of it. Fix it. Win some goddamn games and make this an actual fun year to watch. It, it already is fun. Give me something. Give me a little bit more. Well, you, you have more. Sam Bradford there. The dude can light it up. The right. dude's doing his job. He's doing the best he can as a quarterback. He just don't have the tools around him that are, you know, executing the plays. Well, right. So, Whenever you have a terrible O-line, which is abysmal, 
They only allow three sacks. That, that, that's, an that's an improvement. That is an improvement. <laughs> Which is terrible, though. Three <laughs> sacks? Are you kidding me? That's not acceptable for any team. But that's good for them, which should tell you how bad they really are. This O-line is miserable at best. Miserable. The, and then on top of that, their receiving core is so bad, and Bradford is doing everything he can. He's getting the ball down to him, and they're catching it, but then they're dropping it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's so bad, and he, he needs a better team is what needs to happen. So, Brandon Lloyd, if you're watching this, do your Thank job you very much. and don't fill in with all these other J.O.s. Yeah, you know, you got to have a winning attitude. You have to have a pissed off demeanor right now and make it happen. So. Speaking, yep. speaking of making it happen, Ed, what, get, what, what holy shitted you this week? And what pissed you right off this week? Well, my holy shit moment is the uh, the altercation between Harbaugh and Schwartz <laughs> after the <laughs> Detroit San Fran game. Yeah. I don't care what happened. Here's what I look at. The Niners have the same attitude that we're looking for in the Rams. Yeah. Right. And they what, have that what Detroit better, attitude. What better way to do it than when you, if your coach gets fired up, you get fired up. Right. You're right. And they're five and one with a fired up coach and the whole press this week is all about the the that was a pretty coach cute little melee going to, to the tunnel there. Oh yeah. And you know Schwartz I, wanted some. I, I think that Harbaugh is a cocky little arrogant SOB sometimes. But you want to fire your team up, and then I saw. I also saw footage of him after that into the tunnel, high fiving his players, giving the rah rahs. Then went to the locker room, and made a big speech. And those guys are fired up, man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's cool. And that's they, what my they deserve moment. it too, because they've been fighting back ever since that loss with the Cowboys. They've been a different team. They've showed a different side of themselves. You this, know, is a diff this is a different Alex Smith. This is a leader that we're actually watching. This isn't just like laying down and. You know, I got my money and, you know, I can't figure out my system and I'm going to blame it on this, this, and this. This is Alex Smith actually taking responsibility and leading his team. Yep. My other holy shit moment is the fact that the Rams play the Cowboys this week in Texas. Mm -hmm. And right across the parking lot is the Texas Rangers baseball stadium where my Cardinals are playing the Rangers. Woo! Hooray for the Cardinals! And anyone who knows me knows I was born in St. Louis, uh, born in St. Louis, Raised in Texas, back to St. Louis. So I'm kind of, uh, I can't lose this weekend either way. Not really. But I definitely hope the Cardinals win the World Series. However, the Rangers went last year. They're back-to-back -back appearances. So mm -hmm. they're a dangerous team. To beat. They're a dangerous team. Go yeah, Cardinals. Yep. Um, what pisses me off is the passing of Dan Wilder. I know it's a football show, folks, but <laughs> I mentioned on Facebook, if anyone knows me and saw my post, we're very passionate about the sports we watch. We're very passionate about the athletes within those sports. We get pissed off, and we're, we can be really hard on somebody. Absolutely. We get happy about it, and we're very happy about it. It sometimes controls your attitude of a day. Mm. But watching the, in case you don't know, uh, yesterday at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, uh, the IZOT IndyCar Series had their championship weekend, and on the 13th lap, there was a huge crash, 15 cars, fiery crash, craziness. Many drivers described it as a Terminator movie. Debris everywhere, smoking, burning, very intense. Um, a two hour red flag situation, which was very hard to watch because you knew with the demeanor, Danica Patrick had to be consoled in the pits an hour and a half after this happened. Yeah. And then anyway, at one point they called a driver's meeting and uh, they all come out with their heads down low. There was no press allowed into the meeting. And subsequently, they announced the death of Dan Weldon, which was <laughs> that's a sad thing. So, yeah, the bad thing is Dan Weldon was behind the crash that happened, but he got caught up in slowed up traffic and he went airborne. Yep, flipped over into the catch fence and did some tootle tools and it was just a very tragic situation. It, it was a very bad. Thing. That brings us to the end of holy shit that pisses me off. Week six. Shit, Mario and CT slash Dunce. <laughs>